measuring ESRT and MEDL devices. It electrically evoked stapedial reflex threshold, often referred to as ESRT, is an objective approach to setting upper loudness levels in cochlear implants. Studies have shown a strong correlation between ESRT and upper stimulation levels. Additionally, patients programmed with ESRT will often report equal loudness between these upper stimulation levels. Having balanced loudness levels across the electrode array has been shown to provide the patient with higher perceived sound quality and better speech recognition performance when compared to subjective loudness tasks. The equipment needed to successfully obtain ESRT measurements are an impedance bridge with the ability to measure reflex threshold. For the purpose of this demonstration, a GSI TempStar Pro is being used, the patient's processor, and the Medel Maestro fitting software. Invite the patient to sit in a comfortable position and instruct them to sit as still as possible. For some patients, it can be helpful to provide them with an activity such as watching a movie or reading a book. Once they are comfortable, perform otoscopy. Evaluate their middle ear status with tympanometry. It is important to note that ESRT cannot be measured if the patient has a type B tympanogram. Additionally, responses may be difficult to observe if they have a type C or type A sub S. Continue by selecting the reflex decay mode and set the probe tone to 226, 678, or 1000 Hz. In the MedL software, make sure that you have the M level selected on the first electrode you would like to measure. Once you are ready to begin, start the reflex decay and wait a second or two to see the baseline. Then, with the reflex decay still running, present three to four stimulations at the patient's currently worn M level, making sure to allow enough time in the frame to see the onset and offset of a response. It is useful to have the computer audio on to assist in observing responses. If a response is observed on the first presentation, decrease your M level and present again. Continue to decrease M level until a response is not observed. Once a response is no longer observed, increase the M level until a response is again observed. Here is an example of a response being observed on the first presentation. If a response is not observed on the first presentation, increase your M level and present again. Continue to increase your M level until a response is observed. Here is an example of when no response is observed on the first presentation and the clinician increasing the M level and presenting again. The M level is increased until a response is observed. Once you have observed a response on the electrode, move to the next test electrode. Repeat the process until you've obtained ESRT on all desired electrodes. The following are some video examples of what you may see in your own clinic. Here is an example of a visualized response. Notice that when the stimulus is presented, the tracing changes in synchrony with the stimulus indicating an ESRT response.
Some additional things to keep in mind when measuring ESRT in your patients. Do not increase the M level beyond the patient's comfort level. If you have a poor seal or fit with your impedance probe, change it. A poor fit can present as a rise in your tracing. If you are having a difficult time observing responses, try measuring from the other ear. Not all ESRT responses look the same. Be prepared to see variation in the responses. In summary, programs set with ESRT provide the patient with a higher perceived sound quality and better speech recognition performance when compared to subjective loudness tasks. Be prepared for variations of ESRT responses and practice makes observing responses easier. Thank you for watching.